Okay, today I'm doing an introduction to Lava and Docker. Um, this could be useful if you are new to Lava and looking to learn Docker, or it could be useful if you are looking to learn Lava for the first time, because it will show how Lava fits together, um, and we'll do that using Docker containers. So what I have here is a repository called Lava Docker Compose. I started this repository recently to try to show a best practice of how to use Lava with Docker. And um, to compose a Lava environment using container primitives that are distributed by the Lava team. Uh, before about November 2018, Lava did not officially support Docker containers. There were um, several secondary projects that created Lava containers, but they weren't supported by the Lava team directly. and and so to use them, you either, so basically before November 2018, you had to package your own Lava or use somebody else's packaged Lava. Um, now that the Docker team, I'm sorry, now that the Lava team supports Docker, um, we can use the Lava Docker containers directly. This is great because it allows everybody to use the exact same software uh, without any concerns about, uh, about different implementations. Um, so first of all, I'm not going to cover how to install Docker. I assume that that is taken care of. And I'm going to go through the readme a little bit as we go here, just um, because it also describes how to do this. So let's assume you have Docker running. The best way to know if Docker is working is to run Docker run. Uh, when you're running Docker run at the command line, I always use dash dash rm. If you don't use dash dash rm, the container that you run will remain in the file system. And so if you're doing a Docker run as a one-off, I always use dash dash rm. Um, interactive terminal, this is also really useful when you're running something from the command line. Um, otherwise, it'll, it'll run without a terminal in the background. And the easiest way to find out if, we're, if we have something here is to run hello world from Docker. Now, if you haven't run this before, it'll do a download. It'll download the hello world container from Docker Hub. And the hello world container... Um, just prints out some information. Um, if you notice, I ran this as my user. I did not use sudo. Um, that is something that I recommend when you install Docker. You set it up so that you can run it as a user as well. Uh, so now that we have that, let's find the Lava containers. Um, so I'm just going to Google. Uh, by the way, I didn't do a lot of preparation for this. I really want to show you how I, uh, how I approach this and how I discover... Um, things instead of just showing the finished product. If you are interested in just the finished product, um, go to danru slash lava docker compose. So let's find the lava container. So lava docker container. And we see kernel CI lava docker. Um, this is one of the third party um, implementations of, of using lava with docker that I mentioned. Um, and I'm going to go I'm going to go here. Now, one of the things that the Lava project has is they ship with their documentation, which means when you Google a Lava problem, often you end up at some Lava installation. In this case, we're at validation.lenaro.org, which is Lenaro's production Lava uh, server. And I see that it's running version 2011. Now, that's a little old at this point, actually. So I'm going to go to lavasoftware.org. And, uh, okay, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to go straight to the documentation for the latest version of the documentation for the Docker containers in Lava. Um, this is what it looks like today. And I think of interest is finding the actual containers that exist. So they distribute a Lava dispatcher and a Lava server. The Lava server is also called the master. The dispatcher is also sometimes called the slave. They're available on Docker Hub and on Lava software org's uh, Docker repository. So I'm going to go to Docker Hub, and I want to I want to find this guy here. So I'm going to copy paste that. All right. So here we are. I've I've already discovered a couple things that a new user might get tripped up on. Uh, basically, we'll, the goal here is that you would end up at 
hub.docker.com slash use slash lava software. This is where the official lava containers end up on Docker Hub. And when we're looking at this, we can see there's lava software, lava dispatcher, lava server, ARCH64 lava dispatcher, AMD64 lava dispatcher, and then ARCH64 and AMD64 lava server. Uh, now these should be using uh, multi-arch containers. They're not yet. And so you have to use the correctly named one. Um, I'm going to assume that we're using AMD64, but if you're using ARCH64, you'll have to use that one um, directly. Okay, so we have the dispatcher container and the server container. Um, I recommend that you review the documentation for how to use these. Um, by the time you watch this, this may be quite different. Uh, so let's try running one. What the heck? So docker run, I'm going to keep doing rm-it and we're going to say lava software. So this has to kind of, this has to match the docker hub path. So lava software slash amd64 lava server. Now before I run this let me just note that uh, I was going to note that the Lava server and the AR AMD64 Lava server, um, which one is correct, but I'm actually not sure which one is correct. Uh, let's try just Lava server and see what happens. Okay, I can't find it locally. It's going to download it. Okay, the first thing it does is starting Postgres, waiting for Postgres. While it's doing this, I'm going to go and actually look at the Docker file. Um, now again, I know where this is. If you were to try to find this on your own, it might be a little bit more difficult, but we're going to go to um, lavasoftware.org's GitLab, and then it's under Lava Package Docker. And I'm going to go into AMD64, and I'm going to want the server. And the, here's the Docker file. So it exposes several ports. Um, it copies in the Lava package, and it copies in the entry point and runs it. Uh, I skipped through it pretty quickly, but there is also a Lava server base. Uh, what the Lava server base, which the Lava server inherits from, does is it performs all of the apt installations to prepare the image. So. Basically, what we have here is install all the apt packages, install the Lava packages directly, uh, and then the entry point. The entry point is the thing that is the interface to the Lava container. So that's the one that you really need to pay attention to. So let's take a look at the entry point. OK, that's signal handler. So there's some functions, functions, functions. OK. And here's where it actually starts stuff. So the first thing it does is start Postgres. Uh, it waits for Postgres to come up. Then it runs Lava Server Manage Migrate. Then it runs uh, Unicorn. Then it runs Apache. Then it starts Lava Log Service. Then it starts Lava Publisher. Then it starts Lava Master. OK, so there's a lot going on in this container. I think over time what we'll see is, is some of these get uh, taken out and put into their own container. But for now, what the container looks like is is it comes with everything you need. So it runs multiple processes in the container. And then what it waits on is it runs a tail dash F against all of the all of the log files, which is what we're seeing in the window over here. Now I'm not going to be able to connect to this because I did not forward any ports. And I see up here that it has port all right, so on the Docker file, it has port 80. So I'm going to control C here, let this stop. I'm going to run it again. But the second time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the port so that I can access it. I'm just going to kill this hard. I don't care. So I think it's, let me get usage here. I think we can just do dash P. So 
sorry, capital P. Let's try that. And so now what I'm hoping I can do is I can go to colon 80 and see if it shows up on port 80. And I might have the wrong port here. Let's look back at this Docker file. I see port 80 defined here. Okay, let's try it more explicitly with the ports. Um, publish all exposed ports to random ports. Yeah, it's definitely not what I wanted. Um, Okay, I think it's like this. So take the container as port 80 and expose it on my host as port 80 so I can connect to it. And again, it starts up Postgres. And there it is. Okay, now we can't sign in because we don't have a user. So the way to create a user is to exec into the container. So I'm going to go down to my other window over here, and I'm going to do docker ps. I'm going to do docker exec. So exec lets you run a command inside a container. Um, this container gets a randomly generated name when you run it at the command line like this, and so it's called quizzical diffy in this case. And so I'm going to run docker exec quizzical diffy, and I want to run bash. And you need to run dash IT, I believe, here. There we go. So now I can add my user. And I'm going to go ahead and look back at my documentation to see how to do that because I don't remember the command. I'm going to cheat. I have a file in here where I did it. Okay, so it is lava server manage. Users, add, staff. Okay, so I'm going to add an admin user with password admin. Now if we go back to Lava here, refresh, sign in, admin, admin. There we go, I'm an administrator and I can come in here and see the devices. We don't have any devices, we just set this up. Uh, but this is interesting. I have a Lava server running, and I haven't actually installed anything on my host. Um, I'm actually running Fedora, I'm not running Debian. Lava requires and only supports Debian. So this gives a nice way to start um, spinning up spinning up Lava. Now it's not actually doing anything yet, so let's uh, let's I'm trying to think of what order I want to do things. Um, so to add a device, you need to add a device file, and you need to add a health check file. And those are done at the file system. Um, before I start modifying my Docker container, though, uh, I need to talk about how to run the container. So right now the database is in the container. And right now we would have to copy more files into the container to get them to uh, to be available to Lava Server. But I don't want to make changes inside the Docker container. I really want any state that's in the container to live outside the container so that I can um, delete the container, run a different version of the container, and not have to worry about uh, state getting deleted in the container. You really don't want to have any files in the container that you care about. So before I start adding devices, I want to introduce Docker Compose. Let me cancel back out of this. So I'm just going to make a working directory here. And I'm going to make a compose file. Now what compose does is instead of having to keep track of all of the arguments at the command line, and especially once you start running multiple containers, uh, compose lets you put all of that configuration information in a, in a simple YAML file and run docker compose against that YAML file, and it will run all of the docker commands for you to bring up your your environment that that will um, consist of multiple containers. So um, I'm going to cheat again and look at the end. 
uh, because I have a Docker Compose file right here. So first you need to specify your version. Um, this is because uh, Docker Composed is a version format. Services. So these are the named containers. So the first thing we should do, uh, in my estimation, is take the database out of the cert out of the master container. Um, I want to manage the data in the database outside of the Lava master uh, container. The way the Lava container works is it's a little bit hard to get the to mount a volume in. You can't mount a volume in because the directory doesn't exist until runtime. So it's a little hard to get your data out of if you're using out of the container if you're using the the Lava Master um, the database in the container. So what I want to do is I want to run it as a separate container. So I'm going to call that container database, and uh, we're going to use Postgres 9.6. Now why did I choose 9.6? Uh, let me show you. So again, what we can do is something like this. Um, and to find out what Docker or what Lava expects is we can run the container like that. We can exec into it, and we can just see what, what version it's running, which is what I did previously to, to determine this, but I'll show it here. So let's... Do Docker PS again. So now we're at hardcore Blackburn. So we're going to do Docker exec uh, hardcore tab complete it. Um, I don't know if I can do the IT here. Nope. Okay, now we're going to do, uh, uh, I forget what it is. And we're going to look for Postgres. Okay, and so I chose 9.6 because it matches what Lava expects to use uh, with, with the version that's in here. Now, you could probably use a newer version, but when you start making decisions like that, you're really, um, uh, you're, you're, in my opinion, you're asking for trouble because the best way to run Lava is to run the versions that are compatible and that have been tested and that are run by everybody else. If you want to use a newer version, it might work, it might not. If it doesn't work, um, you're on your own. So I'm going to leave that running for a moment and open a new window here and go back to the compose file. So we're going to use Postgres 9.6. Now, how did I find Postgres 9.6? Uh, I searched for the Postgres Docker file. And Postgres has really nice Docker files, in my estimation. Uh, they support uh, all of these versions, 9.4 through 11.1. And it has a pretty nice interface where you can set variables uh, in order to, in order to uh, control the behavior of the container. OK. So we're going to run Postgres 9.6. By the way, the format for these Docker strings is um, the path, and then colon, and then the version, if it's versioned. So container name. This is what's going to show up in Docker PS instead of a randomly generated name. And we're just going to say Lava Postgres. And environment. So this allows us to pass environmental variables into the container. All of these options in the, do in the Docker Compose file have analogous options on the Docker command line. So from the command line, you can pass in environmental variables using Docker Run. Or in Docker Compose, you can put them in a file. Uh, you can put that file in Git and version control it and share it. And uh, so it really it, it is a nice um, way to do it. So Postgres user, and this comes from uh, Postgres user I found over here. So here's the variables that it lets you define. Password, user, PG data. This is the data directory that your f files are going to live in. This is the thing that you need to um, provide as a volume in Docker so that your data is outside of the containers. It allows you to do init args and um, other things. So, so we're going to use Lava Server. 
Um, I know that it's lava server because if I go to etc uh, lava server here and I look at I never remember if it's settings or instance.conf. So in our default uh, etc lava server instance.conf, it does db user lava server, db server localhost, db name lava server. Uh, we will deal with that localhost in a moment. But for now, let's keep the default username and let's come up with a Postgres password. Now, really, this should be managed as a secret, but for the point of a demonstration, for a local demonstration, um, it's not very critical. Okay, and then let's make a volume. So let's talk about volumes. Um, the way you can do vol there's a couple ways to do volumes in Docker. You can mount any file system or any path from your local file system into your container using a Docker volume. You can do it as a directory or as a single file. You can also use a Docker managed volume, which is what I'm going to do for Postgres, because a Docker managed volume is still just a file system path on your file system, but it's one that Docker knows about and Docker can manage. So Docker can create it and Docker can destroy it if you, if you choose to let it. Uh, this is easier uh, than outside of Docker Compose running Makedir somewhere outside of your source tree or putting it in your source tree and then ignoring it. Um, using a Docker volume, I think, simplifies administration. So this is a named volume, which we're going to define later. So this is a list of paths. We're going to call it PG Data. That's the source, the destination. And so that destination, again, comes from Postgres's uh, documentation. That's the default PG Data path. And I'm just going to zoom down here. And this is where the volumes are defined in this Docker Compose file. So volumes, these are Docker Docker managed volumes. PG Data is the name which I gave it. And this is the so PG data is the name in the Docker Compose file that is referenced. The name value here is what uh, Docker volumes will see it as. So it's similar to the container name. And so I'm going to call it lava server PG data. Okay. Okay, so let's try this compose file before we go any further. What I expect this to do is create a Docker volume. Um, download and run Postgres 9.6, attach that Docker volume to the Postgres container, and and run run a database. So let's let's find out if it works. Docker compose up. Docker compose up will run all of the containers in the in the file. Okay, so I already have done this in the past, and so I've already got containers. So let me show you how to deal with this. So I've got a bunch of Docker images. These are all containers that I've got locally cached. Um, and some of these are using the same name, Lava um, Postgres. And so I need to remove the old one so I can run the new one. Um, on my desktop, I don't run any persistent containers that I care about. So what I do when I get this is I just remove everything. Docker has a system command, which has a purge option. Prune, I'm sorry. Um, and this just deletes everything. It deletes all of your containers. It doesn't delete volumes, I don't believe. Um, and so there we go. I, I reclaimed four gigs. And now when I do Docker images, I should see, uh, I still see them. I think there might be another, yeah. We'll give it the, we'll give it the AF options here. And now it's really gonna do some I think it doesn't. I think it doesn't delete named containers if you, uh, by default, it just deletes the ones that were like run ephemerally without a name. All right. All right. Let's run Docker Compose up again. Now it has to download it because I deleted it. Um, there's probably a better way to do that.
Mm-mm. Okay, I think it's done. So I'm going to control C. That tells me my Docker files is, is looking good. And now we know that we need to modify this uh, this etc lava server instance.conf file. So let me show you how that modification can be done. Now in an ideal world, um, the lava server container would let me set that very that value as an environmental variable. So I could pass in and to my Docker run, I could pass in lava DB server, and I could give it the the name or IP of my database. Um, but the lava server container doesn't have that interface yet, uh, and so we need to. What we need to do is we need to provide our own instance.conf to the container. Now, if I just modified it in the container, when we, I upgrade containers or I clear the cache or run it on a new system, it's not going to have that change. So we need to do the change in a way that is controlled and that we can put into source control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that file out. Let me go into my lava directory. I'm going to do docker cp. Docker cp lets you copy files into and out of containers. And I'm going to do hardcore uh, blackburn slash etc lava server instance.conf. And I'm going to copy that to my local directory here. So now I have a local copy of instance.conf. That's great. So let's go back to our uh, compose file then. And let's put lava server in here. Okay, so, so I'm going to call it server, and I'm going to do container name, lava server, ports, uh, remember we had to specify to allow port 80 uh, to be accessible outside of the container so that we could get to the web interface. And I'm going to bring that config file in as a volume. So we're going to say over uh, instance.conf. We're going to mount it to etc lava server. And what that's going to do is it's going to overlay our uh, local outside the container copy of instance.conf into the over the top of the uh, the one that comes with the container. So that will let us set our. Well, let me edit it here. So the, quest, the next question becomes, what do we set for the IP here? Because we're running in Docker Compose, and how does, how does the Lava Server container know how to get back to the uh, database container? Um, if you're not using Docker Compose, that can be a little tricky. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. One is that you can export the port on your container to your local host and then make that available to your other container and use the host to do that. Um, the other way is to create a Docker network, and what Docker Compose does is it creates a Docker network for you, and it makes all of these names, such as database and server, which you know maybe I should have been more creative with their naming, um, it makes those available um, to resolve inside the containers. And so what we can do is, over here, is we can set this to just database. Uh, and that's going to resolve thanks to Docker Compose and the Docker network that it creates. So all of our containers will run on a local private network. And um, let's explore how that works a little bit. And let's try this. I'm going to go back and, and delete my old... Stop my old one here. I don't want that anymore. And we'll try to run Docker Compose up. And it didn't like port. So let's fix that. Sorcerer has neither an image nor build context. Yeah, I forgot that. So we need an image here, and we're going to do um, lava software slash md64. Or we can just do lava server here. 
I hope that multi-arch thing is solved before long so the AMD 64, ARCH 64 stuff isn't ever going to be necessary. But um, if you're running ARCH 64 today, you probably have to specify that in the container name. Okay, and then versions. We haven't talked about this yet. So if we go back to... If we go back here, we can see what tags it has. So it has a latest tag, and it has a 2019-01 and a 2018-10. Um, now, I happen to know that if I go back into the AMD64 Lava server, that I will also see that I'll see 2018-11. So this is a little inconsistent right now. It's because they're switching back and forth between the name, um, and it looks like uh, Remy is using both names at the moment, which is okay. So we're going to use 2019.01. If you don't specify a version, you get latest. Like when we did Hello World, we just got the latest version of Hello World that existed. We didn't um, get a specific version. And that's fine for when you're running at the command line. That's why it's nice to have a latest. Um, same as when we ran a Lava Server at the command line. We just ran Lava Server. We didn't specify a version. But when you're doing it in a, a controlled software way that you want it to be repeatable for yourself and for others, you really want to always specify a version. So in a Docker Compose file, I would expect a version to almost always be specified here. And so this puts us on the January version, which is the most recent release at this time. All right, Docker Compose up. Named volume is used in the... Ah. Okay, so what happened here is that because the source of this volume is not a fully qualified path, it thought that it was a Docker volume. This can be solved by providing a full path here. Or relative path, but it has to be uh, it has to be anchored. And this is why I didn't rehearse this. I thought it would be a, I thought it would be fun to see all of the problems that can happen and and how I troubleshoot them and I'm by no means an expert but uh, okay now I've seen this one before I'm putting myself on the spot here on all these check if the specified host passed and just um, I think this might be because I tried doing a directory and not a file here um, if that's true let's see Yeah. So if you spec if you're going to mount a file in as a volume, you have to give it the file destination. You can't just give it the directory. There you go. I'm sure I've learned that about four times now, but I just learned it again. Okay. So authentication failed for user lava server. Um I'm going to switch windows here now, and I'm going to start doing it down on the other side. But so I can see the errors and the file in the same. Password does not match. OK, so the issue here is that, of course, we specified my secret password here. But in instance.conf, we have database password one two three four five. Or oh, I guess I don't know what that is. <laughs> it looks random. So now here, if we do my secret password, okay. I'm gonna run Docker Compose up from down here now. And let's see. Now notice the server still starts Postgres. It's doesn't give you a, a way to not start it, but we're just not going to use it. So Lava is going to point to our other Postgres file. Okay, we're getting a permission denied. So let's exec into that container. Now, um, exec works a little differently, or Compose gives you some helpers with exec too. So instead of running um, Docker PS, Docker exec lava server. Um, I can do that, um, but I can also do Docker compose exec lava server. And 
command and my command. And this one doesn't need the dash it, which is why um, which is why I was confused before. And it's just called server because that's what I called it in the file. So this uses the Docker compose name, and it does the right thing with regard to not needing the dash it like I was like what was hanging me up earlier. Okay, so I saw in here if I scroll up that it was complaining about not being able to read etc lava server instance.conf. So let's go to etc etc lava server and I can see instance.conf is uh, mode what is that 640 and it's using my UID. So notice that the file keeps the same UID it had on the root file system. That's something else that using Docker volume solves for you. Um, and so when you're mounting files in as files that your local user owns, you need to be more careful with it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that file to 644 so that the Lava server has read access to it. So give everybody access to that. And then I'm going to go back down here. I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to start it again. Uh, once it connects, I expect to see all of the tables and schema get created in that database. Scroll up. Mm. I don't know if it worked. Let's exec in again and see. Okay, well, that's interesting. It looks right. Um, I can't tell if it's working. Let's try to go to it. Let me get rid of these old windows. It's up. Of course, admin admin isn't going to work again because... Or is it? Why did that work? I think it's connecting to itself instead of to the container. That's confusing. So let's see what we can do here. etc lava server instance.conf permission. Okay, let me look back at my docker compose file here see if I did something for this. So I really don't want it connecting to its local database. That makes me irritated. I don't understand what's going on. I should be able to read this file just fine. Let me um, do some classic software engineering and try again and see if I get the same result. And this time I'm going to clear my screen, make sure I'm not looking at an old log. Um, I'm just wondering if I should delete everything, but let's see if we can debug it first. Was I looking at an old log? I'm still logged in as admin. Does admin come by default? I wouldn't expect that. Oh, <laughs> okay, I know what's happening here. Um, it's using my, my volume 
from the last time I did this. That's fun. So let, let me show you. Um, so let's look at our Docker volumes. Docker volume is the command to inspect uh, your local Docker volumes. And you can see I have several volumes here, and one of them is called Lava Server PG Data. And this is the Postgres volume that I used last time I did this. And since I used the same volume name, I got the same volume. So I got a pre configured volume, uh, which was confusing because I wasn't expecting things to be working yet. So I'm going to delete these volumes. I don't. I don't want them. Um, Docker volume, rm, rm dash f. I guess. Uh, all right. We'll just give it the name. There's a better way to do this, but. Of course, it's in use. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, let's delete a couple of these. Okay. Golly. Okay, let's do Docker Compose up, and we'll get a fresh database this time, and a fresh container. So I need to learn how to not have to remove the container in order to disconnect it from the volume, clearly. Okay, and there's the schema that I was expecting to see. Okay, so while this runs, um, let's look at our Docker Compose file again. Think about what we want to do next. Okay, so we have the server, we have the database, and uh, we want to start thinking about what kind of device we want to deploy. Now, we can deploy a QEMU device without having any physical device attached to Lava, and that's kind of the nicest way to test that all this is hooked up. And so we will also need a dispatcher in order to actually run the QAMU device. So I think we'll set up the dispatcher and then we will set up the device itself. Um, so let's take a look at the dispatcher container. Docker run lava dispatcher. Um, so of course, I have to say Lava Software. And it looks like we're up. So I can go back to localhost. And this should be a fresh Lava installation now this time. Sign in. This should not work. 
and it doesn't. So again, we have to run that Lava server man, uh, to add our administrative user. Oops. Okay, so meanwhile, I'm downloading the Lava Dispatcher and running it interactively. And let's go to Let's go look at its entry point. And this is the same as Lava Server. Um, what the Docker file has, I can just tell you, is um, it installs the apt requirements and then it adds the Lava. Uh, uh, I can't think of what it's called now. the Lava Dispatcher package. Um, and then what the entry point runs is is much simpler than the than the server. And I am a little surprised to see something here. Um, so ultimately it runs Lava Slave and then and that's it. But I, what I'm surprised about is this entry point .d. I didn't expect to see this here. Um, so that's uh, this is an interesting point. This root entry point .d is something that we added in order to allow you to insert a startup, an additional startup script at the Docker startup at the runtime. Okay, so it looks like that's running, um, and it also. So note here that it has some environmental variables that it supports, logger URL, log level, log file, and master URL. So these are environmental variables that we're going to have to set in order to tell Lava Dispatcher how to find Lava Master. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go, here's our dispatcher guy. And I'm gonna just make sure I have it right here. So image, Lava software. Um, Lava Dispatcher 2019.01. These are versions the same as Lava Server. Uh, container name. Uh, we'll skip devices for now. The required thing is environment variables. I'm just going to paste these. Okay, so this will set up our <clears throat> our dispatcher. And so note again here, uh, the server here corresponds with this name here. Um, for fun, let me sh let's see how that resolves because I'm not sure. I am assuming it's a host file, but we can do Docker pose exec server bash. And here we see, um, I assume this is the database server's IP and the database server's um, hash. I don't know how that resolves. So that's an open question, but it does resolve. I kind of thought I would see database in the host file. Okay, so we have the dispatcher configured there. Let's cancel this and start it with the dispatcher. And then let's add a device. Uh, 
I think you'll be able to see the dispatcher in here. Uh, should show up as a worker. Worker, dispatcher, online. There we go. There's our dispatcher container. So let's add a QEMU worker. Um, to add a worker to Lava, you need to, um, well, let's add it in the UI first. Uh, so we have to sign in. In order to sign in, we have to add our admin user. Again, I can't remember what that command is. This provision script that I'm cheating with is a script that runs at startup to add the user for the first time run. So I'm just going to add it here once again. Um, now that our database, that adds a user in the database. Now that our database is on a persistent Docker volume, I only have to do that one time. And now I should be able to log in as admin. I can. And let's go add a device. Um, now I don't have a device file in the file system yet, so I'm not sure if this is going to work. I actually do most of this from the command line. So devices, add. Okay, we're going to call it QMU01. Now I've been cheating with names a little bit where for example I say dispatcher instead of dispatcher 01 because you may have multiple dispatchers don't cheat when it comes to the device you do not want your device name to have the same name as your device type the device types name is QEMU so do not name your device QEMU uh, ask me how I know about this it took me a long time to figure that out okay so let's add the device type QEMU and this is going to match a device type file that's already on the file system. That might be all I have to do for now. Let's see. Save that. Okay, so now we have a QEMU device. HC is health check. It has none. Is public? Nope. And config? Nope. So let's see if we can make some of those red checks go to green. Um, and I'm just going to show you where it is. So I'm in the Lava server. Um, container here and I'm going to go into dispatcher config and let's look at device types first these are the device types that lava ships with support um, and so um, we can see the QEMU one here and so when I say device type in lava it's going to match to this device type file on the file system if I were to need to modify a device type file this is where I would do it uh, likewise we have devices which is empty and health checks which is empty so we need to provide a device file for our QEMU worker and a health check file for our QEMU worker now I don't want to add it in the container like this I want to add it outside the container and mount it into the container um, that way it's persistent and controlled by my version control and it doesn't go away once again when the when the container goes away. So let's um, get those from Lava. So I'm going to take them from my Compose repository here. Um, in my Compose repository I've got it laid out so that it matches the layout of the file systems and stuff. Uh, in case you're wondering why that's different. Okay, so we have this devices file. Oops. And we have this health check file. So I'm just going to download this this way. Maybe there's an easier way. Okay, so I have my QMU YAML. That's my device file. And I have my, or I'm sorry, that was my health check file. And I have my QMU01.jinja, this is my device file. Okay. Um, let's check the permissions on those. Good. I'm learning slowly. Okay, so then let's do QMU.yaml. 
to etc lava server slash Uh, that path we were just at, but I can't remember it exactly. So, dispatcher config, uh, and that was our health check. Um, notice in the Docker Compose in the repository, I have a health check directory and a uh, device directory that I'm mounting in. In fact, let's do it like that. So let's make a devices directory and make a health checks directory. And let's move QMU YAML to the health checks. Let's just look at that and make sure it looks right. Good. And let's move QMU01 to the devices. Okay, so then we can just mount these indirectly without each without having without having to enumerate every single file. So we're just going to do dot slash health checks. And that's going to go to that. And then we're going to do dot slash devices. Oops. OK, so that should add our QME devices. Now I'm going to show you a trick that I use, Docker Compose. Uh, restart disp, uh, it's called server. So we don't have to actually do docker compose, cancel out of it, and do the um, up down thing for all the containers every time. We can just restart it like this in a case where all I want to do is have it read that file. Um, and actually, as I'm explaining it, I'm realizing that uh, I was going to say lava doesn't need that. Lava will pick those files up live, but docker needs it to pick up that new volume mount. So if we were just adding a file. Um, now that we're mounting those two directories in, if I added a file into it, it'll immediately be available to the container and Lava will immediately see it. But since it was the first time I was mounting those directories in, I did need to restart the container. Okay, so let's go back to our our uh, device here. And I expect, uh, okay, HC enabled is on, HC is off, config is off. So let's take a look at this guy. I'm going to docker compose exec server bash and look in etc lava server. Just make sure those mounts came in correctly. Config. And I don't see anything in devices and I don't see anything in health checks. So I think I might have to, I think I might have, I may have been wrong and I didn't want to restart I wanted to cancel so I'm just gonna cancel this over here and restart the whole compose environment I think part of the purpose here though is to show that the way you iterate on this environment is is everything is reproducible from scratch at every given time so we're not making a lot of changes live that aren't reproducible Everything is reproducible and everything is describable in Docker Compose. Okay, so let's check that again. Check devices, check health checks. Good, let's refresh over here and see if we have any more Good. So now we have a health check uh, check mark and we have a config check mark. That's great. Is public um, isn't really relevant. You can set that in here. Um, there's a there's a flag right here. So there now it'll be public also. Okay. So let's run the health check. So let's go back to the top level host. And let's go to status. Device QEMU. No worker. Okay, so we forgot to do something. I need to associate it with a worker. I think I must do that in administration. So devices Q 
QEMU worker host. Here we go. Dispatcher. Save. Okay. Refresh here. Good. So at some point, I expect it to schedule a health check, but I guess it's in maintenance mode, so it won't. So let's click on the device here. And let's set it to unknown. So this should run a health check if everything is hooked up. And I expect this health check to fail, but I'd like to see it try to run. There we go, running. You can click the little I to see the output. And what's it doing? First, it's downloading from images.validation.lenaro.org. And this is kind of a slow download. If you notice in the Docker Compose repository, there's a squid container. That squid container is there to cache this download so that it only downloads at one time rather than every time you run the job because sitting here watching it download that container uh, is only fun the first time. And what I expect to happen here is once it gets to the actual run part, I expect it to fail because of permissions. Docker has not been, the dispatcher container has not been given the permission to be able to run QEMU on my host. So it's going to fail when it tries to run a QEMU. And so while it's running and downloading, let's go look at what that's going to look like. Uh, if you notice here, I have devices and I have capabilities defined. And I also have some volumes defined. That's the other thing it may fail on. Uh, I'm deciding if we should put that squid container in here now. I think we, <laughs> I think we maybe should. Because I like to do these, I like to debug iteratively because otherwise you could be adding, if you just copy paste everything, you don't know if you need all of it and it's better to just hit the problem and then fix the problem and hit the problem and fix the problem. That way you have the most minimally viable configuration. Um, but I think we might take the squid container. So this squid container, let's just do this quick. Um, the Lava Lab that's run by Lenaro uses Squid to cache downloads and it's going to be kind of a pain to integrate quickly. I don't really want to get sidetracked on squid too much, but I also don't want to sit and hit this over and over. So I might have to compromise being that I'm already over an hour here. So I think I'm going to compromise. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the rest of that dispatcher configuration to my compose file and skip squid for now. So let's talk through the, the rest of this configuration. Devices. Uh, by default, a container does not get access to slash dev from your host system. If you run a container in privileged mode, it'll get access to all of slash dev, but you don't generally want to do that if you can avoid it. Um, but you can provide a list of devices that it can access. So in this case, QEMU uh, needs KVM. Uh, at least my health check job needs KVM. I don't know if QEMU always needs KVM, but and it runs some networking stuff. And I can see in my file here that I wrote that these are for QEMU. Um, and then it needs this net admin to do the, the network parts. And we better add those volumes. Oops. Um, notice I'm putting read only on these volumes. So uh, uh, the third argument, or it's source, source destination, and then there's a mode. So you can do RO for read only, RW is default, which is how those other volumes above are, 
are mounted. Those could be read only as well. Okay, so we have our job here and it, where did it fail? Is that the actual, the first failure? Yeah. Unable to start lib guest FS. I don't recognize that failure. <laughs> it looks like I've seen it before though. Yeah, so sometimes when you're running when you're contain when you're running these things containerized that aren't weren't originally containerized or it's kind of a it's kind of like a what do you call it a backwards debugging uh, uh, session where you're starting at the end and you have to work your way back to try to figure out what it was expecting. Um, being that I I'm kind of inclined to wrap this up, I'm just going to save. I'm going to take this section here, devices, capabilities, and volumes. I'm going to save this. I'm going to restart my compose environment and I'm going to see if it passes the second time. Um, I've already debugged all of all of this so I know those things are required and getting to the point of discovering that um, I don't need to reproduce every single one of those iterations here. Okay, so just as an introduction to Lava here, so this host QEMU01, its health is marked bad, um, and let me run this and then I'll explain it. And so Lava has the concept of device's health. If a device fails or before a device can come online, it'll run a health check. A health check is a job that is specified uh, you know, as we specified it at the file system, and it is used to um, do basically a boot test of your device. And it runs that periodically to make sure that your device is healthy and that it's not giving you like false errors. And um, it's it's actually a really nice concept in, in Lava. And so when you set your device health to unknown, it'll run the health check. And if the health check succeeds, it'll set it to go. And if the health check fails, it'll set it to bad. There's other healths available like maintenance mode, which you can set if you want to um, do some maintenance on your device and you don't want any jobs running on it. So I just hit refresh here and I see our health check is running. I imagine it's gonna be downloading the image at the moment that I click on this. There it is. And so I'm hoping this will pass and we can wrap this up. Um, while that runs, let me go through the rest of this repository and explain what's happening here. So in this repository on the master branch, I expect that if you have Docker and Docker Compose installed, that you can clone this repository and you can type make and it will, it will run up by default, which will run Docker Compose build and Docker Compose up. And when we look at the Docker file, or the Docker Compose file, it should start to look familiar. So this is the database that, that we configured already. This is the squid caching container. Um, it uses a Docker volume to persist the cache. And it has a config file that is mounted in. And it exposes port 3128. The Lava server is a little bit more complex in here than it is on in the example that we just went through because it has a build context. So it actually builds its own Lava server container, but it doesn't build it from scratch. It doesn't build it from Debian. It takes the existing Lava server container and it changes it in a small way. Uh, and I'll show you that in a moment. And then it runs that. So it's a very, it's a, it's a small change. It's unfortunate that it has to be done, um, but it, 
it's actually fixed for the next version of Lava. So when the version of Lava after 2019.01 comes out, that'll be fixed. And I'll show you why that is in there. Okay, container name, ports, volumes. Um, okay, so here's the other volumes that are added. Um, job output is a Docker volume. Again, this is where all of the artifacts for the jobs that run are saved, the log files. So I save those to a, a Docker volume. Server configuration, there's settings.conf, instance.conf, the health checks and the devices, and there's this environment file that I also had to set. And all of those files are in this repository, so you can see uh, exactly what they have in them. And then there's this provision script. The provision script um, adds the admin user, and it adds the QEMU device, and it adds the QEMU health check. It simulates, or it runs from the command line what I was doing when I was clicking through the interface to add the device and so when you run this for the first time, the admin user and the device will automatically already be installed and the health check should be running by the time you log into the interface and look and find it. Um, there's a depends on clause here for the database. This is just a timing thing. So this makes sure that uh, the database doesn't, you don't want the server to come up and say, oh, there's no database and, and fail. So this makes it so that the server waits until the database is up. Um, incidentally, the entry point on the Lava server also has a wait for clause for the database. So it should, I don't know that this is actually necessary anymore. Um, the dispatcher container, again, this is exactly what we're currently running. And then here's the volume. So we have the squid volume and the job output volume. And let's look quickly at the what did I say we needed to look at? Post squid overlay. Oh yes, server Docker. So this is the context that it rebuilds or it builds a new container on top of Lava Server. So if we look at the Docker file, every Docker file starts with a from line. This means this is the image that you start with and then you make your changes. Uh, so Lava, for example, starts with Debian. I'm starting with Lava. So I take the Lava existing container and then I add in my entry point and that's the only change I'm making. So I'm changing, I'm replacing the entry point with my own. And the reason I had to do that is because the, the, where is it? It's because of these three lines right here. So I wanted to be able to run this provision script on startup to add the admin, the admin user and the, the QEMU device and Lava Lava's container didn't give me a interface to do that, and so I added it by modifying the entry point to run a script at runtime. Uh, the next version of the Lava container will have this functionality, so it, this won't be needed. I won't. I will be able to use Lava Server for this use case directly from from Lava software without without having to modify it. So I'm looking forward to getting rid of that. And this is the reason that's really bad. If you have to duplicate this entire entry point script. Um, you know, you're copying and pasting a lot of code. You really don't want to have to do that. So um, it's really important that the entry points give interfaces to users for all of the things that they may possibly need to be able to modify in the environment. Okay, let's go back and check on our health check. And it looks like it passed. So we have one healthy device here. There we go. I hope that was useful. Um, if you have any questions, I'll put some of the links in the video um, in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm on Twitter at MNDrew. That's M-N-D-R-U-E. And feel free to email me anytime. Thank you.